get this. You were in there. Did you just look that good to make it look like that? And is Cowboy still that good that he should stick around? Because I can see where some might be like, it, because it, it hurts, it sucks to see Cowboy lose like that, but what do you think about that? I mean, is, is, there, is this still the place for him? Man, I hope I look good. No, I'm just kidding, man. He's not a small welterweight. I fought, I fought big welterweights, I fought small welterweights. He is not a small welterweight. I, he, 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 felt, he felt good. Just stylistically, you know, I don't have as big a name. I fight wild, and I'm, and I'm not afraid to go sit there and sit down and throw punches until someone dies. I just don't think this was an ideal matchup for his style and for where he's at in his career. So effectively, the question reworded is, do I think Cowboy could still have success in the UFC? And I do, you know, at least one more. I hope he is given the opportunity to kind of call his final shots. And, uh, and then as for all the fans at home, uh, one, I want to say thank you. I thought I was going to get crushed on social media. I did not. It blew my mind. And I'm a positive person. People were cool. And I just, you know, any, anyone who mentions Cowboy, just like, if anything, share a cool memory of what he's done in his career. And then let's think of some ideas to, to kind of send them off in a better direction. He just did a grappling match against RDA, against Rafael Bazzoni, yeah. in the arm bar, if I'm not mistaken. Like, those grappling matches, look at your conditioning up. You know, his fight against Nico was not a bad fight. It was competitive, and Nico is a bit of a madman himself. Wild like, like like me, you know, the fight against Pettis, I thought he won. I watched that fight with very clear intentions a lot. Recently, in prepping for not only this Cowboy fight, but for the Pettis fight. And, and then you look at his loss of T for Boogeyman. He's one of the scariest dudes to find on planet Earth. Conrad Arter, say what you want, he's one of the best strikers on planet Earth. Very strong. And then before that was Gaethje. Who wants to fight Gaethje? Like, he's not losing to... to to, to guys who are, who, are, who are, you know, you know, if anything, I'm like of that tier on the bottom of that list, and and, and you know, but no, I, I think he could have a fight if he wanted to and still succeed. He, I can't. He's a big dude. He's, he's a big 55. It's just different too. It's just the, the weight behind it. You know, I've trained with 85ers. I've trained with lightweights and, and welterweights, and there's there's like mass differences behind the punches. And, and I think that plays a factor. Like when I throw, especially that, that right hook, I throw every bit of power I can, so long as I'm not overthrowing it from this. And you know, I, I think I landed like two or three of them. And I put guys down with one, and he ate three of them pretty handily and, and stayed on his feet. So I mean, if he's still got a chin, he's still game. Just he had it in his eyes. You can see, you can see when guys don't have it anymore. I'm looking at him pre-fight, in the fight, he was, he was down. And I love the mentality and I love the performance. You know, just looking, I know records don't really show the truth of really what's going on. You know, coming in here, you know, win-loss, win-loss, the last couple ones are loss, win-loss, win. Do you feel like you've turned the corner? Are we ready to see a, a nice streak get built at this point? Do you feel that you're firing at all at, at a whole other level right now than what you have recently? Absolutely. You know, I found Fortis four or five fights ago and just having direction. Is cool. So, like, my team at home is like my family in a sense that I can make mistakes. I can I can deliberately make bad decisions in a fight, which is no excuse, but they'll still love me. You know, they'll still like accept me. Like, all right, let's, let's move on. And it's it's hard to break that barrier. What I found at Fortis was uh, accountability with, with Coach Safe. If I make a bad decision on purpose, I, uh, I don't know how it's going to fly. I won't find out. Like, I'm not going to find that out the hard way. And there's just a, there's an accountability factor to it. And I'll tell you guys, I don't know if it's like this with every fighter, but I would bet my life that I would win every fight. Any fight I ever take, as soon as I step in the octagon, I would like bet my life that I would win it. And when you don't win, it's as if you're like your reality is stripped from your soul. It's weird, it's a weird feeling. Because I would like do anything to win. And uh, so I mean, yeah, if you ever ask me, I plan on going on a hundred fight win streak every point in my career at all times. And there's some weird hiccups, but but absolutely I can't. Can't wait to fight again. I'm gonna take some time. I'm not banged up at all, and uh, just, just waiting for the next the next opponent. And last thing for me, and it kind of touches on what you've been you've been bringing up. Fortis tonight was a, a bit of a rough night for Fortis coming into your fight. Was that the toughest thing for you to to go into a fight, having that seeing that happen, and did that put any extra sort of not pressure to get the win, but did it did it affect you in any way? And and in turn. Do you feel that you gained some strength knowing that you can maybe feel that for your teammates and still go out there and perform at a, at a super high level? Yeah, I've been doing this a long time. I've fought alongside a lot of teammates in my day, and uh, and no, you know, I know they can handle their stuff. They know I can handle my stuff. 
the record, I don't know how Jeff Neal lost that decision. Am I, am I crazy? I mean, how, how did you guys score it? It was, it was close. It was real, real close. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah, okay. I just, I thought he had the first two locked. I mean, he did the damage, he was pressing the action. That sucks. I mean, Jeff's, Jeff's a beast. Jeff's a beast. Jeff's a beast. I'll tell you, man, I hit my the train and I know he's a beast. I mean, he'll, he'll bounce back. Man. He's the man. Uh, you know, Carlos Diego he had a tough fight in Gillespie. Um, man, that guy can scramble. And CDF's fun to watch, no matter what. I love my teammates, Dio. I didn't do anything for him. And, uh, and, and I know, you know, we didn't win all the fights today, but we'll, we'll make improvements and come back. And, and I'm happy to, to rep the flag and, 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 and carry it into battle. And I'm just happy to come out on the other side alive and, and still swing it. So I'm happy to represent this time. Congratulations, Wayne. Thank you. Alex, uh, not only did you take out a legend in Donald Cerrone, but you replaced a legend in Diego Sanchez. What was uh, that like? Replacing him under the kind of bizarre way it unraveled. Yeah, I I can speak freely, pretty freely. Yeah, but fair enough. Um, I, so I've asked for Diego for a long for a while, but I don't, I'm not like trying to fight these old vets. I just I like that Diego would run to the front and throw down. I just thought that'd be cool. I've built such a resume as a martial artist for myself for two reasons. One, for my own personal goal accomplishing reasons, and two, so my students know that their coach has gone through the fire. For as long as there have been society, people have been fighting. You look at the old feudal samurais, they didn't learn how to fight with swords because they wanted to, they did it to protect their families and their way of life. Martial arts has been around forever. For as long as martial arts has been around, there have been these fake coaches who just do, they, they believe their stuff is real, and, and man, I, I just can't believe how embedded this one is in Diego. Like, I'm sure you guys saw the video of Diego hanging upside down, getting punched and kicked in the head. Like, that is insane. It's, it's crazy to see. Again, I really wanted to see Diego and Sanchez fight. Like, if someone had given me the option to, like, you know, if you can go back in time and force the action, could you allow that Diego and Cowboy fight to happen? I'd say yes and not step in, like, knowing this outcome. That's how, that's how much I think Cowboy especially has earned it. You know, Diego, too, talk about putting some, some groundwork in for a company, man. He's, he's been fighting. I was a big Diego fan for a while. Like when he fought Clay Guido, I was real big on Diego when he fought BJ Penn. And that fight didn't go so smooth for him. But uh, but no, it was cool. It was cool to replace him. I, mean, I was happy to get this fight. But uh, it just sucks, man. It makes me really feel for Diego. It really does, like, in my heart. And if anything, you know, parents who are going to spare the kids, whoever wants to go do martial arts, do some research on the coaches. And if you don't know, message me. Alex, whatever man, I'll do the research and let you guys know. It's weird, it makes me so mad when, when creepy adults lead their students astray. I've seen great coaching, I've seen good coaching, I've seen bad coaching in my career. And, uh, and that, that's one thing. Yeah, I'll go into gyms like that or in the area, and I'll like ask about the coach and like read the literature. And like they see my ears, and a lot of guys know that I fight around town. And a lot of people don't like that I do that, but man, you gotta keep the quality good. And you can't show, especially a kid get bullied some bullshit. If they go out and they try to fight with it and get, and get beat up, I mean, that's just bad news all around. And uh, legitimacy and coaching and in martial arts is very much so attainable today. It's important that people are finding the, the right coaches. So you've never hung upside down and had somebody kick in the head for training? No, I have one primary goal when I train and when I fight, and it's to not get punched and kicked in the face. Once I figure out how to do that, then I try to land the punches and the kicks in the face. But the mitigating damage, it has to be a priority. It has to be. The longevity of the sport won't last. And I was telling my coach, you know, people talk about retirement all the time. There are two factors that will lead me to retire. One is if I start taking too much damage to my head in training or in fights, which is not the case, not even close to that. And the two is if I'm not enjoying the fight camps. Every fight camp I've had, and I'm coming up on 40 now, I've enjoyed more than the last. The reason I was in such good shape for this fight is my boy Cameron Graves. He's fighting on Dana White's looking for a fight the Sunday after the UFC Houston pay-per-view. And I'm getting hit with Coach Matt Safe, myself, Coach Safe, are getting him ready for a fight. And I was having fun in his fight camp. My other corner, Jake Efron, he'll be in the UFC soon. He'll be fighting. We're going to get him prepped soon. My boy Ricky Tercius, he's in the Ultimate Fighter house right now. He did two-month fight camp to prep for the house, and I was there with him. This fight camp's the most fun thing in the world. You know, I own it on a gym. Every single day, training all day. So yeah, it's it's, it's awesome.
And when, and when you say that you wish, you know, that Diego had earned the chance to fight Donald, but some people would say, well, you know, maybe the UFC is protecting Diego from himself with possible CTE. Do you do you see sometimes some fighters that are still fighting and uh, you know effects of that? You know what? I, I, to answer your question, no. Um, the sport is still so young. Uh, I mean, like we'll see as as some of like Hall of Famers who are out of the mix, like been out of the mix for a while, Chuck, Tito, Randy, it's a good take to the when those guys are like 60 and up, then I think we'll have some some real uh, some ideas to go off of. But uh, not really. I've met a few boxers in my day who were a little punch drunk. That's different. Boxing training and boxing fighting, that's different. I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy, it. I don't enjoy it. too much head trauma. Um, you know, I don't know. That's hard to speak on. I would, if, if I was in that position, people like CT, CT, I would pit them maybe so mad and defensive. So I've never met the guy. I can't speak for the guy. Um, but however, if like if there are very clear symptoms in terms of like mood swings and aggression and like weird violent outbursts, then that needs to be looked into. But honestly, you know, Diego looked fine. He'd be making go. Oh, that was awesome. That would have been a good fight to go out. That was a good one. He even thought that. Michelle Pickard, that dude's an explosive beast, and he did all right. And even Jim Matthews, a young company dude, I mean, granted, he lost the fight, but he didn't, like, get crushed. And I think Diego, if anything, nah, I don't know about that. He was going to say we had more fights than, than Calvin is 10, but I think, I think those guys could have fought and had a safe, fun fight. Never cool. uh, Vegas is opening up a lot more and more. Are you going to celebrate? Uh, on the strip tonight? <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back tomorrow with my, my coaches and probably eat some Thai food and watch the fight back. And, and, uh, and I don't know, I can't wait to talk to my wife, too. She's awesome. And she, she runs the ship back home when I'm gone. She has all the business side of the gym while I teach, train, and fight. We had such a good thing going back home. I, I love, love going to Florida and training. Like, that's the what's cool to travel and train. It's a very martial arts style and way of life and I get to do both the business side, the teaching side, the coaching side, and the training side. It's so much fun. Before I had Fortis, I would do everything at my home gym which I loved and it was it was great. But when I go to Fortis I'm a student and I get to take orders and not give orders. I like that. Like there's the, the soldier in me that likes that. And I'm just so happy to have such a, a great symbiotic relationship between the Congratulations. Congrats on the big win, Alex. I'm sure this is the biggest win of your career. Call me a day on the big ESPN card. But it's great that you touched on being so passionate about the sport. You almost uh, are, are pulling people's cars, checking the integrity of these gyms. Recently, George St. Pierre mentioned that a lot of guys lose their career in the gym. Can you attribute that to these coaches that might not necessarily know what they're doing? And, and hurting people's careers because they're leading them directly. Yeah, it's a it's it's a little more rare to see in the UFC. Um, and, 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 and to be fair, a lot of these guys are, are doing the best they can. Um, you know, I had I don't know how many fights before I got hooked up with Coach Safe at Fortis. Maybe four or five, and I had decent success. You know, I, I say decent. I had like a 50-50 split on wins and losses. But some of the losses were preventable, were very avoidable, like a split decision loss, whatever this and that. I needed a, just a little more accountability, and, uh, and, and, and you can tell, at least I can tell, I can always tell, you know, high-level coaches for not even going to local fights, one of my, one of my cornermen here, his first amateur fight ever, I was like, Jake, I want you to, I want you to look around, I want you to watch how other people are wrapping hands and hitting pads and coaching. I said, say nothing, I just want you to watch. And watch how he saw some guys doing things well, but he saw some guys doing things wrong, like wrong. And like, I'm not sitting there ragging on, I'm not on a high horse. I'm like, Jake, you be thankful, like I'm thankful that we were shown the correct way. My early coaches on, Dan and Kim, Chet Robo back when I first started training, this is 14, 15 years ago. Thankfully, they showed us the proper way of doing things. Ricky Tercer's the thing I was in Clement House. Now he was a 15-year-old when I was 18, learning kind of like the early way. And then when I took over the gym back in 2012, I realized that my coaches too were kind of like exploring the great unknown. So I ended up like taking the reins with Coach Matt. We've been running this for a long time. Matt Wall, man, wizard paddle, the best paddle holder in your life. 
but uh, we've, we've gone through the, not even the ups and downs, but the trials and the errors, and we've learned the, the, the right way. And every once in a while, you'll see Sean coaching weird stuff that really has no place in the UFC, but it's rare. It, it's rare. And, uh, and again, like, I'm, you know, there's some like small towns who have small town martial arts gyms. Those guys are doing the best they can, and that's fine. But it's when people think they know things that they don't like. That they can be a guy with weird old methods and death. That's all just, to me, so transparent. You just see through that. And it makes me mad because it can get people hurt, you know. So, so nothing too crazy. Uh, for, for every one crap coach out there, you got five really good ones, especially in Dallas. And there's a really good scene in Forest, crushing about the best gym down there far. And then in Houston, there's a lot of really, really good gyms. There's a, so like Gracie Baja headquarters, uh, at, at least Gracie Baja, Texas. Jack Ulino, I think I promotes him on my like, degrees in my black belt. He's awesome. Guy with the arm, GG West Chase. Super high level grappling. And there's a couple really good Indian gyms. My gym, Gracie Baja, Woodlands, the Fong, Woodlands, the May. And then uh, that I've been training a lot uh, with, with, with Trevor Giles over a war. I'm at home when I'm not really going to win Fortis. And uh, there's a lot of really good places to train. But again, just having Fortis to kind of like spearhead everything and give me the directions is awesome. And it's super necessary. At this level. Excellent. Thank you for the insight. And maybe one day you'll be on it's always sunny in Philly being sponsored by Fight Oh, yeah. Hey, man, I drink some Fight <laughs> Thank you, sir. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Good to go. Cool. Thank you so much. Get on the poster was a goal and do the post by press was a goal. Thank you.